Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be a match from K-League, which you can check out on really any of these guys' channels. They run it pretty much open on Twitch, I'm pretty sure. Herbmon G5, Arter Turtle does it as well. Ranged, I'm pretty sure, is out there. They just kind of group up and do something very similar to NAPL. If you're not familiar with NAPL, uh, Artosis, Jayun, Gypsy do the exact same thing, but it's kind of like the top, it's like the top eight to top 12 invite only section i'll have to ask as far as how that precisely goes but these guys are on the cusp i'm i would not be shocked if either so i think g5 i'll get into the comments with this coming season of bsl actually i will say these are top contenders in north america i do want to tap on the upcoming season of bsl however overall and mention that bsl season 18 i'm still debating whether i'm going to take the time off or not i might just do hasu league and try to skip the pro league casting just because it's very very demanding um, to make it all happen with my current schedule. This is on Retro, by the way. But I do want to note that for maybe because of Stormgate, maybe because of other factors, maybe because of being in practice through K-League and NAPL, there's a slew of North Americans in the round of 24. And so I'm pretty excited, excited for the North American uh, player base going into this upcoming season. Looking better than ever. It looks like we're going to see an overpool upper left-hand corner from Urban playing very, very safe versus G5 which is pretty important. I'm wondering if G5 is going to go for a 12 Nexus, which he probably could pull off, honestly, at cross positions on a floor player map. He's one of the Protoss players that I would say is capable of pulling a 12 Nexus off against Zerg like this. And it looks like he has saved the resources to do so. He made no movements to drop a gateway. It is possible he's just going to drop a very delayed gateway and afford simultaneously. But nope, I think this is in fact, yeah, 12 Nexus at the 155 mark and now let's see if Urbmon is able to scout it so pocketing the drone just in case a probe is sneaking in but finding nothing he's going to move that drone scout out went across the middle aisle just to see if there's any sort of proxies making his way top right so he's going to come across g5 in second position but with that forge dropped and the overpool and it looks like only a pair of zerglings constructed i do believe g5 is going to be just fine so there's the four zerglings overall so i i believe with the distance well we'll have to see how this plays out urban he would need to be making a beeline for that right hand spawn right the second overlord sees the probe urban ma is making his way that direction we've got the f the initial photon cannon down g5 is going to hang out and probably plop down the gateway as well so now we've got i, I this is still i believe a corner that you can kind of sneak out of but we do have drones so the drone sees it Okay, that looks like that is a sight, uh, tight seal. And ooh, the probe going to turn around and try to... That drone has no place to go. So very likely, ooh, just uh, be able to sneak out because of the mineral trick, potentially. But the Zerglings making the way up. Are they going to be able to sneak through with the timing of this? So one of them looks like they're going to be able to. The other one is wiped out. But G5 still with a massive economic lead. A single Zergling is not much of a threat. It's enough to keep... Uh, as you can see... The probe's actually able to do a considerable amount of damage, and G5 actually just peeling off a single probe to go ahead and assault that Zergling. And actually, that might be it. For, I don't. I think that caught Urban by surprise. Second probe pulling off to try to get him, and just two health. Finally, yeah, that last kill. And this is why single Zerglings are not much of a threat. Assassinated in the spawn. Twelve o'clock base up and running. Immediate tech to layer, and an initial zealot is going to be out on the field, and that probe gonna hold that gap just in case as far as a follow-up second photon cannon and plus one weapons on the way so big economic spike early for g5 sometimes what can happen with protoss players in the mid game is, is because they end up in a bit of a defensive position overall they can end up st still feeding into a potential steal as far as a follow-up we'll see if g5 plan whether he it's possible he could go for a stargate skip he could go for a lot of things but at some point, he's going to have to make sure that he's not getting a... That's one thing I've seen players that go for the 12 Nexus open run into is not having, as far as a follow-up, a large amount of troops to make sure that they're not getting hard contained as far as a follow-up. And let's see how Urban decides to play against it. Right now, he's just saturating these bases. There's still no... So it looks like G5 playing information passively. He's basically making the statement, Urban's got to come to me because of this economic lead. So instead, I'm going to fan out. Two Overlords in the forward position. Overlord's going to try to make its way into the main. Cybernetics Core warping in. A second pylon 
around that natural expansion just in case it was a tech to spire. It looks like we do have, it looks like, yeah, potentially three gate spire play here. Another probe making its way out. It is going to see a lot of zerglings making their way across. That's eight zerglings making their way to the natural expansion. That will be sufficient to deal with these zealots there. Robotic facility, so a skip of Stargate, and actually this, we'll see if this cues off Urban. The Zerglings testing the front, looks like one of them lost their lives for the effort. But with that skip to Robo, and just the Stargate behind this, if there, there's the Stargate, but that Stargate coming out a lot later, actually I'm kind of curious about the timing of all of it, come to think of it with the 12 Nexus, because I know where it is on the standard progression of things, but I'm, this is when it, it might, uh, I'm guessing this might, Put Urban for a loop as well. Is okay. Where does it land in the the general state of things? So two gateways. I believe you want the Corsairs building by the time the Mutalisks are spawning. So if Urban wanted to go for a uh, looks like a dragoon produced to kill that Overlord out on the front as well. If Urban wanted to go for a Mutalisk flood, I think he could get some punishing damage as a result of it. Instead, it looks like he's just going to go ahead, drop a Hydral Sten, and go up to five hatch Hydra instead but potentially a missed opportunity. We do have a shuttle being built, which will certainly allow G5 to create some chaos out on the map. And look at this, G5 after killing that Overlord, canceling, what a play, canceling the Stargate. So just showing Urban that yes, yes I can go air, but then canceling it. This might cost him though, because it looks like Urban is now after dropping those additional, let's see if I can find the eggs that are doing it. After dropping the additional hatcheries, he is building a handful of mutalisks. I will say one part of Urban's play uh, I have seen that has been, I, I won't call it a weakness because he still managed to play excellent games regardless, is he doesn't uh, check his Protoss opponent to make sure they're dropping these defensive cannons in many instances in the natural or in the main. And it looks like we are seeing those defensive cannons now, but keep in mind these are defensive cannons without additional Corsair support. So if we had six mutalisks, they could wipe out that cannon and then wreak a lot of havoc otherwise. Secondary prompt for G5 is now he has that shuttle, but he doesn't have any air support. So that'll help against ground units, but it will not help against air units. Range just about finished. And we, so we got a lot. It looks like he wants to try to cover it with more Dragoons than usual. Plus one weapons is fun, finished, going for plus one air. We got four Mutalisks this direction. A fifth Mutalisk going to join. And we'll see if Urban even decides to test either location. So he's got five Mutalisks out in the air, is met, met by no Corsair. And G5 moving out with a very interesting timing right here. So he's got plus one weapons, six Dragoons off his three gateways. Was just testing to front the front, I think, to see whether a lot of troops were making their way that direction. A second cannon dropped immediately by G5. And I'm not sure if Urban recognized, oh, hey, there was no Corsair there. But this second cannon necessary for G5 just to play it absolutely safe. And let's see if Urban again tests that front. Second cannon warping in to the southern position, Citadel of Dune underneath. And the Dragoons actually moving there into position to go ahead and defend. So nice defense there by G5. The Mutal is taking some damage and I gotta feel like Urban's feeling a little bit frustrated here, but he doesn't know that these are still very, very useful units as that shuttle is loaded up with a Reaver and we got a second Reaver now being constructed. And so, and I haven't seen this sort of play, I can't remember how long it's been. It's been a, quite a while where I've seen basically just Dragoon Reaver against Zerg, heads up. I think this, I saw a little bit of this when people were still trying to figure out what to do against 973 in the mid game. In the meantime, Urban gonna go ahead and plant down a fourth hatchery at a pocketed location at the nine o'clock. A little bit risky if, it's, if it gets scouted. And honestly, it might hurt him a little bit because let's see if the shuttle takes an adjusted route across the nine o'clock. In the meantime, pretty decent vision between the Zerglings and the Mutalisks out of position. Urban just going to go ahead and punch a whole bunch of drones behind us, plus one weapons for his Hydralis just about finished. But this is a, a pretty sizable, strong attack army. If G5 just wants to, it looks like he's going to open up his gateway rather than his forge to go ahead and cycle units out. But this is a very powerful army and it might catch, I, I think it's going to catch Urban completely off guard. The Zergling Gonna get wiped out there. Let's see if G5 checks the three o'clock uh, that three o'clock location. I'm gonna presume not right this second. But I'm concerned that with the lack of lurkers and lack of sizable supply, that Urban might not have enough to defend this. And he still hasn't seen the Reavers. So even if he got Sutton colonies here, 
I don't know that he's going to be able to contend with this army. He's potentially going to lose something. Hydralisk's making the way forward. The Mutalist pushing up. They're looking for High Templar and finding nothing. Might have seen the shuttle. Hydralisk's exiting to the south. The Reaver's now unloaded. They're already in a great position where they can strike towards the front. They can just slow walk it from here. And this is kind of an interesting reverse situation where it's an inverted contain potentially from G5 under Urban. Some Scourge trying to dive in. They are able to wipe that shuttle out. But a large control group of Hydralisks has been completely decimated and they have nothing to their name as a result. And this is a very vulnerable natural expansion now. Although the Dragoons leading poking away at some of the units, taking some damage from that Sutton Colony rather than the Reavers leading right the second. But G5 now moving in, wants to hit that timing before Urban's able to quickly resupply. Is getting some great Scarab shots, which is really decimating these Hydralisk lines. And now that natural expansion might be completely open. One of the Reavers down, however, but still one of them remains. And we still got a good amount of Dragoons behind this. Also, the Zealots with that leg speed marching up. A single Sutton Colony remains. That Reaver exposed to the Hydralisks from behind, so it's going to get picked out. But this is now five Dragoons assaulting that natural expansion is are going to be able to at least halt the gas there. And more units continuing to stream across. Natural expansion piled out and G5 has lowered Urban's unit count and Urban a little bit in disarray. We have a High Templar on the front as well. G5 being aggressive because he's going to take out the Hydralist then as well. Which leaves Urban in a rough situation. Beautiful side storm behind this. And honestly, this is a great timing from G5. Looks like he's going to get two... He's emptied a base. It looks like he's going to be able to take out two hatcheries as well. That 3 o'clock base is mining a little bit, so it's negated a little bit. But still, he's got a massive foothold. That's a mine. That's no Hydralist in. The Hydralist in having to be rebuilt. And Urban completely sealing up in his main to try to recover from this. G5 can easily go ahead and grab a third. Looks like that Zergling being a little bit lazy in the midst of this. But what a great... I gotta say, great timing, great build. Urban trying to make the best of a bad situation. He's down half the supply right this second, though. And if he gets another Reaver to the forward field, it looks like he, he probably won't even need it. The plus one weapons, plus one armor, quickly able to shed the Sutton colonies. Psy Storm wiping out a large amount of that drone line. And he's still got this army sitting at the natural expansion, so this is going to be another dead base for Urban. Urban going to, unfortunately, maybe reveal the location of an additional base to that Zealot. Units dying before they're even able to get a shot off as they're spawning. A couple Scourge in the air. I think that was an emergency build potentially there by Urban. Urban very, very scattered and completely thrown off. In the meantime, G5 has managed to go up. And yeah, unfortunately, that 3 o'clock base has now been spotted. And that's going to be another dead Hydralist den, as well as a gone third. So this is all but one for G5 now. So throwing some units against the Sunken Colony at the main. Dragoons might get cleaned up here at the 12 o'clock, but still... These drones at a far position, and they're getting assaulted as they're making their way all the way across. G5 still has more to work with. He hasn't grabbed a third base. He really doesn't need it, though. Zealot's continuing to create chaos as stuff's spawning. Are these Dragoons even going to die? Urban going to GG right there. Crazy one from G5, but a pretty solid win. Hopefully this one doesn't show up on the ladder all over the place from here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.